Welcome to another episode of Naquascape. That's right guys, today I'm going to be doing the hardscape of this ADA 60P finally. If you're new to the channel then welcome to Naquascape where you will find reviews and unboxings of products to do with aquascaping and the planted aquarium. Also in the channel expect to see step by step tutorials and guides on how to set up different type of aquascapes and also low, medium and high tech planted aquariums. So without further ado, I'm going to take you through how I'm going to hardscape this. In fact, this video will be part one of a series of videos because I'm going to show you how I'm going to first of all do the hardscape and set up the substrate system, then do the planting, set up the filters, set up the lights, set up the CO2, and also how I do the initial stages of maintenance to ensure that you get your tank off to a flying start. So if you want to see all of that content, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on all of this vital information and this step-by-step -step guide on how to set up and scape and maintain your planted aquascape. The first thing I actually need to do is put on the backing, the film on the back of the tank. Okay, so the hardscape material that I'm going to be using today is some black north stone or north black stone, I think that's how you pronounce it, and some gnarl manzita wood. So let's just have a close up of what that looks like. <clears throat> so here I've got some north black stone. This is a nice kind of big piece, north black stone. Uh, it's a new stone, well I think it's a relatively new stone. Um, supplied by Adam Pascala. Okay, so I got this piece. I get all my escaping stuff from um, Horizon Aquatics here in the northeast. And yeah, I picked up a load of this stone. Um, as far as I know, it does not affect the KH or the GH, meaning your carbonate, carbonate hardness or your general hardness. 
um, as far as I know, although I will be determining that experimentally. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to see those type of videos. What else am I going to use? Null Manzita wood. Let me just show you how beautiful this rock is. Wood, sorry, is. <laughs> so here it is. Let me just see if that is focusing. Um, I'll tap on the screen, get the foot. Oh, look at that. Look at the detail on that. You know, it's just so nice. I'm just looking at the viewfinder to make sure that this is all in focus and it looks absolutely superb. There you go, lump hammer, put that down, chisel, and some small pieces of black north stone. Now, this rock is incredibly tough, it took quite a lot of uh, energy to get, to get these small pieces and some bigger pieces just so I can block up these holes as naturally as possible. Um, make sure you wear safety specs and I would not recommend that you do this um, if you don't have safety specs or you're not used to using tools um, at home. Okay guys, so you see me create a composition. It took me a bit of a while because I wasn't satisfied with the way the rocks originally were positioned. Now it's time to add some base layer substrate in. Now I have some Power Sand Special S. Um, it's quite expensive, so I don't want to rely on that to bank up the substrate. It's okay in a nanoscape because you only need a little bit. But in this type of tank, I would need quite a lot. So I've gone for a cheap alternative. This is the Aqua Florist Lava Soil. Um, I've never used this before, um, but it is much cheaper than the ADA uh, Power Sand Special um, S. So I'm gonna use this, a cheap alternative, uh, to bank up the soil. So price comparison wise, this stuff, which looks like this, it just looks like crushed lava rock, doesn't it? But it might contain some nutrients. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I can always do a review on this product later on. Um, so you get five liters and it was about just under 20 pounds here in the UK. Whereas Power Sand Special Advance is around about um, 
25 pounds for a two liter bag. So what I'm gonna do is bank the substrate up with this stuff in the main and then top that off with some of the Power Sand Special S and then add the soil onto that. So rocks added, soils added, and that is a hardscape almost done. I need to add more pieces of wood and figure out how I'm going to attach them um, onto the scape. What I'm trying to create is the edge of a kind of riverbed. So some large rocks and I want, you know, a perception of depth going across this way towards the back. Now, one thing that <clears throat> I think is a mistake with this hardscape is in order to create that flow, you know, a, a river flow, a riverbed, you want to have some kind of continuity, I, I feel. Here, these rocks kind of stop that flow. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is actually move these rocks um, and maybe add a couple of more to continue that flow from 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 you know almost at the front of this corner going towards the 
back. And what I want to try and achieve is have large stones and then gradually as I go this way have smaller and smaller stones. So maybe these might need to move a little bit more forward and then here have some smaller stones so that the sense of depth is going a little bit this way. Hi, so kind of changed the hardscape, as I said, just create a bit of continuity there in that corner. Now it's time to see how I can attach this wood onto the rock. Now, I could soak the wood, um, but I really want to get this done and get this out this Friday. So what I'm going to do is see if I can use some of my wife's makeup pads, um, split that open and kind of attach the wood onto the rock. I could maybe look at just attaching the rock to the wood directly where there's contact points using the super glue. I'm gonna try both methods. Never used that method before to attach hardscape to other pieces of hardscape. So, you know, this is my aquascaping journey. This is how we learn. We try things, if it works, it works. If not, we can try other things and see what works out best. So let's see how we get on. As the, you know, the river flows, okay, it's flowing in that direction from the front here towards the back, and you're getting a sense of perspective and depth going back. I finally learned how to um, attach these rock, uh, the wood onto rock using liquid super glue, and liquid being the operative word and either some uh, cigarette uh, filters, I don't smoke so I have to buy these, um, or some, the cotton wool that you find in makeup and removal. So I've used all of my wife's uh, makeup removal pads. She's gonna be happy, isn't she? Okay, so I'm just adding this large coarse gravel. It's um, supplied by Denali and I picked it up from a place called Tropical Supplies Northeast here in the northeast of England. Um, so what I'm doing is just adding some to the front um, and I might then add some detailed pieces of Black North Stone um, near the existing rocks. So I'm from the northeast of England and this is what inspired me to do the scape here in the northeast of England and in England in general, our rivers have, you know, rocks mainly with some fallen wood in there. And that's it. It's pretty plain, very little plants, etc, etc. And that is what inspired me to do this scape was just having some rocks with some fallen wood. So hopefully I can conjure up an appropriate name for this aquascape. 
So I'm just going to carry on adding the details and might time lapse it or might just cut to the final part. So I've handpicked some smaller pieces of gravel out of the gravel that I have. I don't want to drop that here. So hopefully as I turn this corner, so just around here, I should have some smaller pieces. So hopefully from this area to that area is just an inch, but head on it looks like that's really close up and that's really far because I've got bigger gravel here and smaller pieces here. Same you can do with your plants, bigger plants there and as I go towards this area at the back corner, front corner to back corner, big plants, small plants. <clears throat> now it's time for me just to add a little bit of fine gravel um, around here here and then some Colorado sand literally just a handful of sand at the back so this stuff that I'm putting now um, is already wet so it looks very different to that in terms of color similar to the Malaya soil Okay guys, so I'm just going to add some of this Colorado sand, ADA Colorado sand, just in this little area here and bank it up a bit just to give that sense of depth. Time to add a little bit of detail by adding smaller stones of the Black North Rock. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that is the hardscape done. Okay, guys, so this is the view of the tank head on. Hopefully in this area, when you look at it head on, you get that sense of depth. And that's what I was trying to, to achieve. So basically, big rocks, big wood, and then big plants. And as we move from the right hand side at the front to the left hand side at the back, I'm hoping we get this sense of depth and scale. So we can see that's the gap from the front and the back of the glass. I can get my hand in to do maintenance at the front of the glass, but you can see I've left this area for planting all the way back here. Hopefully um, the way the wood is positioned looks natural like it's like it's just fallen in place and you know the flow of the river has kind of wedged it onto the rock. Um, hopefully it doesn't look too um, unnatural. But yeah, there you go guys, that is a hardscape done. Stay tuned for more content about this tank. So 
So next week, I'm going to plant the aquarium. I already have the plants with me. I've got some on the floor here. I've got some in this storage tank, and I will be taking out that tank and using some of those plants as well. Watch next week's video where I will show you what I do to get rid of the algae and the snails from plants that you keep in storage. Thank you again for watching this video on the hardscape of this ADA60P. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on contents when I release videos on how I plant this tank, how I set up the filter, how I set up the lights and the CO2, and how I look after this tank in the first stages of its setup so I can really try and prevent any long-term issues or battles with algae and any other problems that one faces in the aquascaping hobby. See you in the next video. Ta-ra.